today we're going to talk about Gilead Science. Their slogan is creating possible. So let's get started. Woo woo woo. <laughs> Their mission statement is to discover, develop, and deliver innovative therapeutics for people with life-threatening disease. Their vision statement is to create a healthier world for all people. So you can kind of see the sense that it is something related to pharmaceutical, healthy, medical-related company. But Jingri, when I heard, first heard about this company, what is this? <laughs> What is this? <laughs> I'm so lost. Help me. <laughs> and I thought they were making lead company because, you know, Gil, lead, like, I don't know, like lead, like they had the word lead. So something maybe science and lead related. Um, They're in the, they're in the gowns and stuff. So I don't know, maybe. Well, it all started with this guy, Michael Riordan. So a little bit background story about him was that he graduated from Washington University in St. Louis and John Hopkins School of Medicine with a medical degree and finally with the Harvard Business School. Wow. So smart. And he ended up taking a career in finance by working in Menlo Venture. So that kind of defines that he is a very, very smart guy, guys. Super smart. And he looks like this. And moving on, in 1987, what happened was in DeBose Montgomery of Menlo Venture, who is this guy, was like, you know, a bad cold is considered a virus, right? And he actually wondered why there were so little antivirals existing where there was a lot of antibiotics that existed. So with three advisors, Peter, Doug, Harlow, a lot of people, they actually created a company called Oligogene, which actually comes from the name Oligomers, which is actually a molecule. So hard name. I'm going to be having a very hard time pronouncing the name, so please excuse my English. Um, and this company, Riodad, actually became the CEO and he used to um, wanted to develop antiviral drugs as mentioned so they collaborated um, and started with antisense which is a single stranded RNA that is complementary to a protein coding messenger RNA with woo a lot of lot of lot of businessy talks but really short um, it's for cancer mostly. Um, basically uses a small strand of DNA to target specific genetic code sequence. Um, but they, and anyways, the whole point of this was to create an antiviral drugs with this company. In the end, the idea was actually not successful, but what was really good was that it actually helped, um, increase the knowledge of nucleotides. Basically the thing that built, that's the building block of DNAs. If you guys don't remember this from biology, it's not really a big thing um, to know what this company does, but it's actually an interesting fact. Um, so the key point in this page is to know that he wanted to focus something related to antivirals. Um, the one that he created called Antisyn failed, but it really helped him get a good sense of what he could do to overcome it or make it better, right? So in 1988, before actually developing a product to be sold, he actually got a building. So he moved to Foster City's Vintage Park. I think this is in Cali. And they actually changed the name also to Gilead Science um, from the Bomb of Gilead, the ancient Middle East where a region known as Gilead gained the recognition for a medicine. So that's how they got their name, which is a much better name than the Oligogen, um, which probably would have been a very hard word to pronounce for most people. Now, moving on in 1991, they did not make anything. And this is actually their first kind of mini product that people started to recognize, which being said for almost five years, five, four, five years, they were at negative, but 
shockingly, venture capitalists who invested in um, Gil Gilead Science actually believed that he could make something. Probably makes sense because he is very smart. Uh, so their first product is this. So this is known to be Tenofovir. So um, basically what this is, is antiviral therapeutics, which is actually a licensed group of nucleotide components. Remember nucleotide because he got so much knowledge from the first um, product that he failed, um, which is actually a treatment for hepatitis B um, and to treat, uh, sorry, and to treat HIV and AIDS. And it actually got their first approval in 2001. And just by this small product, maybe it's not that small because it could actually treat HIVs and AIDS, um, they got more investors. $40 million secure from financial institutions and $8 million um, to develop genetic code blockers to combat cancer. So not only were they focusing on antiviral, they were looking into the cancer unit. So um, really saving the earth. <laughs> Because at this time, guys, this isn't 2019, 2020, 2021, this is 1991. Medical um, development hasn't been, you know, well set off compared to these days. So actually having a company work on this was very, very important. So a lot of investors wanted to invest in a company like this. Now, in 1992, they did their IPO on NASDAQ, raised $86.25 million, and they hoped, they actually hoped to raise $42 million, so double their price, um, which means that a lot of people saw their success and knowing into how they're going to like succeed. 1995, their first official product was they launched this tide. So the result of this, was that they generated 4.9 million in revenue and people got more interested and a lot of people invested. So they did like a second offering um, where they raised $94.2 million. So they definitely believe that this company could be the one to know um, for treatment of AIDS and HIVs. Now in 1999, they acquired Nexstar Pharmaceutical. Now, what is this company? It's created in Colorado. Their annual sale is um, $130 million, which is actually three times Gilead's sale. Um, and they sold Embisum, which is an injectable fungal treatment along with Dinosome, basically a drug taken by the HIV patient. And why this is important was that they um, Next Star wanted to actually focus more on the science part where like the research and everything and they didn't want to deal with the federal regulators like the Wall Street um, and trying to deliver a financial figure. So their company definitely focused more on like doing the research, getting an outcome and you know giving something to cure any illness out there. And then Gilead would be doing more of like the pharmaceutical part, like delivering to other people, like getting it known, the federal regulators and everything they acquire. So they were really good off um, together. And basically these two companies being combined, what happened was that the company sales increased by 501 percentage just by Embisum. And by 2000, they got, they reached $142 million in sale. Wow. So, you know, their company's getting great. Um, they got a bunch of uh, other companies to be connected. The next product I feel like a lot of people have heard of is Tamiflu. So I've never heard about this. Like I have heard about it, but I've never like looked into it, right? This is actually a treatment for influenza. And this was originally discovered by Gilead too. So why they actually did, uh, entered the Tamiflu business was that after developing this, how they did it into a business is what I'm trying to say, is that they wanted to sell overseas, but they didn't have the capabilities like connection and everything. But the company that they acquired, Nexstar, actually had an access to the European market. So how they did it was because they're already partnered with them or like they've taken control. I don't know, maybe that's not the right word to use it. Um, they were much easier on selling and licensing the future drug for international market. So the profit that uh, Tommy Flu earned in 2004 and 2005 
was their revenue quadrupled to $44.6 million. And then that, again in 2005, it quadrupled again to $161.6 million, uh, making their share price triple. Because at this time, they had a flu going on. So it just worked out perfectly. It's something that the government really wanted to stockpile as an antiviral drug. So around this time, you could see that this company was being like the one to go to if you have like virus going on. And why this is important because, you know, COVID's coming up. So we'll talk about that when we reach 2021. Now in 2001, we're going to talk about Verid, which is another drug to treat um, chronic hepatitis B, another, another thing to prevent and treat HIV and AIDS. I know I've been saying prevent and treat HIV and AIDS, but the technology and the medical components, um, I guess, is getting better every time they create one. So this company is like focusing solely on HIV and AIDS. Um, to a point that they're coming out with a new product soon. So the history of this one is that they actually started in Prague where they patented the drug in 1984. But at this time, it wasn't used for HIV infection. So then what Gilead did was that they wanted to collaborate with this company and because they figured out that they actually had a potential to cure for HIV infected um, patient. So their original version of the HIV AIDS was the tenofovir, but they actually had a limit on curing it perfectly, right? So this is like an updated version where they added disoproxil, um, which actually ended up being more effective. So in 2001, they got an approval for being a cure for HIV. And in 2008, they made another like an update that could be cured for chronic hepatitis B. So the result being said, um, less than 3% of patients who took the drugs over the past two years developed a drug signature mutation, which is very small. Imagine how many people are taking this drug. For patients, this is much better because other drugs that were out there being sold, uh, they, those things had to be taken twice a day. Um, but for this is only once a day. So, you know, you want to take less pills as possible. So this was very effective in 2001. Now in 2002, a businessy type of sort happened where they sold the oncology business to the OSI pharmaceutical for $200 million. It seems that they weren't doing well um, on developing or coming out with a good product um, in a, on oncology. They wanted to focus only on the antivirals. Which makes sense because their hepatitis and AIDS business is going much more better. And that being said, they end up acquiring Triangle for $464 million. Their lead drug is Emtricitabine. But basically what this company Triangle does is they focus on antivirals. And that means that they are more into treatment of chronic hepatitis B and other treatment for HIVs. So that's why it was very important for them to acquire this company because it seems that this that Gilead wanted to be the only company that deals with HIV. So doing a good job. Now in 2006, they are branching a bit out to cardiovascular and respiratory therapeutics area by purchasing companies. Now since 2006, they are going to purchase more and more. So uh, it's going to be more about purchasing. Because I think they're at a point where um, it's they're at this limit of earning, uh, figuring out and developing, and it seems like it's much faster to purchase. Purchase sounds weird. It sounds like they're shopping. Um, but their first one was Myogen. So they acquired this for $2.5 billion. What this company is focusing is the primary preliminary hypertension. Basically, this company is for the cardiovascular. Um, and what that does is like the blood vessels um, and the pressure to going to the arteritis rise than the normal levels. So they're basically curing um, treatment for a lot of high blood pressure inside your heart. And they wanted to create a drug called Embrisentin to treat for the high blood pressure. So that was their first acquirement, which was actually very good because heart 
issues and any go issues going on is very awful. But another <laughs> acquisition in 2006 was Chorus Pharma for $365 million. And this company is now focusing more towards long. So their first product or their product that they wanted to create was the cystic fibrosis which is an infection basically in your lungs so you get a lot of mucus coming out um it's like severe damage to the lungs and i'm curious if this has something to do with covid because covid has a big thing like um has big issues with the lungs area too um so this is where uh the word estrionum lysin lysine comes out because it's basically um a medicine or like a drug to treat patients with uh, lung infection. So like I said, it was a big transition from antivirals, just in HIV to AIDS and moving on to cardiovascular and respiratory system. And then another thing that they acquired in 2006 was Raylo Chemicals. Now this is actually a manufacturing company um, where they manufacture active pharmaceutical ingredients, um, very important for any pharmaceutical companies. They purchased it for $133.3 million, and this is a company based off of a German company, Degosa. $133 million would be approximately 107 million euros. Also, the same thing in 2009, they acquired SV Therapeutics for $1.4 billion. Basically, this company um, is focusing more on cardiovascular drugs as well to treat uh, chest pains. Another company that they acquired 2010 would be the CGI Pharmaceutical for $120 million. This company was interesting because their focus was biology and chemistry. So they wanted to expand their research more towards this area along with another bioscience company for $225 million where they are uh, focusing on fibrotic disease and cancer. I found this interesting. Uh, I'm gonna move on to 2019 because basically from 2010 to 2019, from not, through that nine years, it's been mostly about purchasing. It's purchase, 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 one purchase after another purchase. Not much, obviously there might have been um, in the, in the, like, in between about creating a drug or something that's related to HIV but uh, they did a lot of purchasing now what I found this interesting in 2019 was that they decided to donate Truvada to US for HIV prevention um, so Truvada is another drug that is um, approved to pre uh, prevent infection with HIV and they decided to give it for free to 200,000 patients annually for 11 years. Now, how it started was that actually the officials at the Department of Health and Human Service said that the donation came about um, as a result between the Trump administration and Gilead. So they wanted to uh, help not cause HIV, basically. And the big issue was that a lot of um, low-income Americans have been getting HIVs. Uh, for instance, they had, I think was like 52% of new HIV diagnosed in 2017 around this time, right? Or two years ago. And so, um, and there's like multiple saying, but like some people say that an individual household would be paying $60 a year to purchase HIV, but still that's like a lot of money for a lot of low-income Americans. And they've also noticed that this has been a big issue um, in the AIDS, AIDS community. I don't know if I want to use the word community. So that they really wanted to stop this or make the numbers lower. And some people say that for like for US, it will cost $20,000 a year. For 11 years, they will be sending free uh, HIV prevention, Truvada. And what I found interesting about this was that in 48 countries um, top 10 ranked by the number of HIV diagnosed are LA, Miami, Houston, Chicago, Dallas, Florida, Brooklyn, Atlanta, Phoenix. Now after that obviously a lot of companies has been acquired by Gilead but those are just companies. So now what happened in Gilead Science in 2021? 
What's interesting was that all the time years I've mentioned, you haven't really seen like the big glimpse. Obviously, you could see maybe in like the first row from 2004 to 2008, it did increase in the four year span. So you could probably earn some money. And that's when um, they've been acquiring the companies like the cardiovascular and respiratory um, companies. So as they're expanding, people thought that they're going to be more into it. Um, Obviously, there's them selling oncology wasn't that big of an issue. So nothing much has changed. By 2012 and 2016, I didn't mention anything here. And you're kind of wondering like, why did it increase so much and Jinri didn't mention it. They did like a triple like acquiring session of a bunch of companies um, related to HIVs. So that's probably why it made it seem like people are going to think that Gilead is going to be like a big company from now on. But I couldn't really figure out why all of a sudden. Another thing that I analyzed seeing this was that it doesn't matter even if you come up with like a really good technology or really good sort of deal. It feels like maybe the sales might have increased and they had like a um, world issue like COVID going on uh, in between that time. But what they're doing in 2021 is they recently came out with a quarter two three quarterly report where they say their revenues up by 1.52 billion dollars so bit saying 829 million for one of the drugs which you guys might be familiar but not is Veclory. now what that drug is that's the only one that is a cure for covid19 for now so that is being the therapy of choice in three out of five patients hospitalized with covid19 so that's why this has been increased but from the previous quarter to this quarter it has dropped a bunch from 1.5 billion dollar to 829 and then another thing interesting was an hiv drug seemed to be increasing in demand in all geographies so that they have their performance has been quite encouraging um, and their revenue was increased by two billion dollars which means that that's up to 24 percent truvada as we just learned um their sales decreased by 72 percent from last year and Gilead's hepatitis C virus portfolio saw an increase by 23% to $549 million. While hepatitis B and Delta virus product sales increased by 8%. So overall it's increasing, but I find it interesting that um, some of the sales uh, for HIV drugs has been increasing in a COVID situation. Um, another interesting thing... Um, that I wanted to mention is remdesivir. This is another drug that they're coming out with and their brand name is Veclury. We just learned about it where it's being like a cure for COVID-19 right now. They're actually going to come out with this. Their recent trial did fail, but this is something where it's like an inhaling COVID-19 treatment for now instead of what they're using. Um, and they're hoping that this is going to be another a cure for COVID but we'll have to see about that and the really really recent news a um, couple of one month ago was this this is another very if this succeeds is going to be a money-making business which is a Lana Capavir basically a treatment for HIV 1 in people with limited ther therapy options so basically what this is a cure for is people with um, resistance for any antivirals. This is going to be the one that's going to be curing. Um, it's a first-in-class capsid inhibitor for the cure, cure and treatment for HIV-1. And they recently submitted a drug application to the U.S. Food and Drugs Administration along with their new phase 3 data has been a good support and hopefully having this would be great. So finally! Wow! I am so happy to be done with like all the f medical terminology. Now looking onto their second quarterly report, their financial result um, I wanted to bring, I did mention it a bit earlier, but their total second quarter 2021, like I said, the revenue has increased 21% compared to the same period of 22, uh, 2020. That's primarily due to the COVID 
cure treatment of both things that are being used and their hepatitis C virus products, which is great. Any other thing that I find interesting was that maybe during the second quarter in 2021, they generated like 2.3 billion in operating cash flow, along with them paying cash dividend of 894 million and utilized 43 million in repurchasing common stock. Um, as of June 30 of 2021, Gilead has 7.4 billion of cash, cash equivalent and marketable debt securities compared to 7.9 billion as of last year december 31 of 2020 that being said they are doing currently very good in business and as their ceo said they really want to get a, a be a good catalyst for the current situation of covid and try to figure out the cure like the best way to treat covid 19 so that being said that's all for gilead i hope you guys enjoyed today i hope you guys liked it and Stay tuned to pick the next company.